Hello, uh, Chamber membership. We are back with our Board of Directors interview series. And uh, today we're uh, very fortunate to have Trish Nash join us. Uh, Trish is on our executive board for the Henderson Chamber and is also uh, the vice chair of the Henderson Chamber. And she is the uh, managing broker for Trish Nash uh, Realty. And they, they uh, really focus on residential, uh, but also her husband, uh, Michael Hiltz with SGH also, also does some of the uh, commercial real estate in, in the Valley and recently sold the old uh, Henderson Chamber of Commerce building for us. So that was nice. Um, but uh, good morning, Trish. Good morning. Well, actually, I think we need to say good afternoon. We are, we are past the noon hour. This is yes. correct. Um, so, uh, you know, maybe if you could talk just briefly uh, from a, a real estate firm perspective, how, uh, you know, what has the day to day been like uh, for the firm as an impact of the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, I got to tell you, you know, I, we never thought we'd be walking this path. And it's a very interesting one, as, as it is for all of us in very different ways. Um, you know, the real estate market is one that uh, requires, of course, it requires a job, it requires um, income, and um, there are some people that have been losing their jobs. In fact, I uh, just got the stat this morning that year to date in Nevada, we have three over 369,000 new jobless claims, and that exceeds what we've ever had in one year in Nevada. So that you know really says a lot. And uh, homes are also, you know, it's one of the largest purchases that an individual or family will make. And, and uh, it does require going and, and seeing the home and, and um, uh, walking through it. And that has been a challenge. So we've had to come up with some, some new ways of um, showing homes done virtually and um, of course, safety precautions of wearing a mask and gloves, uh, booties, but more importantly, really being sensitive to the needs of our clients. Um, some clients, some buyers do not feel comfortable at all, even if they are taking safety precautions. Some sellers feel very, very uncomfortable having strangers come into their homes. Um, so we have to ask the question of the buyers, uh, you know, have they traveled out of state? You know, there's a whole series of questions that we need to ask them if they've been near anybody that's had COVID. Um, so we've had to make a lot of changes in, in how we practice our, um, our business from day to day. But I, I have to say, um, for me, although it's been very challenging, both uh, financially, um, emotionally for all of us, you know, here we are, we're in our homes and um, uh, trying to uh, work day to day and keep our spirits up. And then of course, you know, as you do, there's, there's staff, there's agents that we have and, and um, really just trying to keep it all together can, can be a challenge, but uh, we're getting through it. Um, one of the, uh, well, I don't know if that answered your question, a few of other questions, because I could probably just keep rambling on, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, no, it, it definitely. I mean, it, it just provides an insight to the membership, I think, both from, you know, running a, a, a boutique real estate firm such as yours, but, um, but also impacts uh, in the market. I mean, what are you seeing over the last 45 days that, uh, you know, are, are are deals uh, halting midway? Are they going through? Is there a certain sector of the, the realist residential market that is behaving differently? Absolutely. Um, when this initially took place, when the governor announced the lockdown, um, it was like that was sort of the line in the sand that was drawn to everyone in our state of saying, okay, guys, this is real. Um, this is happening. And so there were many people that had knee-jerk reactions. Uh, sellers of mine that called me that either thought it would be wise to take their home off the market or reduce their prices. So I have had to have conversations with, with each individual. Um, I, I didn't recommend to any of them to lower their prices because I felt it was a knee-jerk reaction and that the market still... Um, 
can um, uh, go with the, the price that we have. It can, it can um, sustain that. And then uh, sellers that want to take their home off the market, uh, I, I, didn't, I don't feel it's a good idea because now more people are sitting in front of their computers and they have more time to look at homes. So when the lockdown is over, which, you know, May 15th now, we just had a little hint from the governor that we already know it's going to be extended. So whatever that date is, I believe that there's going to be, and we hope, but I really believe it's true, some pent up demand. Um, because I do have a list of, of buyers that are just waiting. They're waiting from California to come into town from Arizona, from Utah, but they don't want to do it now until their state announces that the lockdown is over. So I believe that, um, in fact, I have a quote here from Lawrence Young, who is the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. He recently said that more temporary interruptions to home sales will be expected in the next couple of months, though home prices are likely to still rise. And the reason that we are anticipating that, although you're hearing to the contrary, you're hearing people say, we're gonna see a big um, um, glut of foreclosures, but right now we're in a much different market than we were back in 2008. Um, most of the homeowners that uh, we have now have equity in their homes, whereas back in 2008, that did not occur. We also have very, very low inventory. And so what I anticipate is going to happen because of that low inventory, the buyers are gonna have less to choose from. And in some situations, depending on the price point, we may even see multiple offers. So I think that that's going to be a very good thing for our real estate market. Um, but once again, only time will tell. So it's, it's hard, hard to know. Right. And how about, say, in regards, you know, at the beginning of all this, there were the wild fluctuations in the stock market. And um, I think some people must have felt um, cash poor at, at one point in the process. But how, how does the how do these stock market fluctuations, how have those factored into uh, your listings and what you're seeing in the marketplace? Oh, boy. So that that has a, a larger impact on what we would call the luxury segment or the higher end segment. Um, I, I list a lot of homes in Lake Las Vegas, many of which are in the million dollar plus range. And um, I actually had three transactions cancel, the buyers canceled in that uh, price range as a result of the stock market, as a result of fear of what they were seeing happen. Because when you're looking at buyers and sellers that are in that higher price point, uh, they typically um, do have a stock portfolio. And so they're watching that daily. And when we start to see the, uh, the market um, plunge, it, uh, it can be very, very frightening for people. So um, there's a, you know, a domino effect because we had a situation where the home was contingent on this buyer who was from California selling his home in California. He got his home under contract. It was over $2 million. And literally a couple days after the announcement of the lockdown, uh, that buyer in California canceled. Thus, the buyer for my home here in Lake Las Vegas canceled. And it's, um, you know, it's just, it's a tough situation for everyone and having to make that difficult call to a seller that, um, you know, the transaction has canceled and now we're in a, a ch more challenging market where we have fewer buyers because not a lot of buyers really want to come in and take a look at a home right now. Well, hopefully that uh, the pent up demand will continue to, to build. And I think that, you know, we hope that that'll uh, really show throughout the all sectors of the, uh, the, the business community, uh, to be sure, um, certainly in real estate as well. Uh, well, I think that was a very helpful overview and synopsis. Is there uh, anything else you might like to add um, as we close then, Trish? No, 
Yeah, I, I, I would, would like to also talk about some of the, because I, I really meant to talk about this earlier and how this has affected our, um, our market, uh, real estate in general. But I think it's affecting all of us in the same way, and that's technology. Here we are, we're doing a Zoom video. And um, so one of the things that we've been utilizing are doing virtual open houses. In fact, uh, last week I was on channel eight and channel three, and I even think 13, um, doing a, a virtual open house. And um, it was on Facebook Live. And, and actually, as a result of that, we ended up getting a buyer from um, Virginia. Never saw the house. Saw the video. and. Um, he, uh, we, we negotiated uh, the, the offer and it was accepted. And then he actually flew in earlier this week and saw the home and, and it worked out beautifully. So that's something new that we, we are probably gonna continue to do as we deal with so many out-of-state buyers here in, in, um, in Nevada, in the Las Vegas Henderson area. Um, but the other item that I, I'm starting to see occur is doing business virtually. For example, I deal with a lot of out of town uh, sellers as well as buyers. And I did a listing presentation the other day via Zoom and um, you know worked out beautifully. I was able to show my listing presentation, share the screen and, um, and it worked out real nice. And the, the seller just felt such a sigh of relief because she was able to see me and feel more comfortable as opposed to just a phone call. So I think that this is going to change the way that all of us do business. So I think if there's something that's gonna come good out of this, uh, it will be our, our use for all of us of technology that uh, I think will allow us to be more, um, more productive perhaps. So it's, it's a good thing. And then lastly, uh, you did mention commercial, the commercial market. Yes, my husband is in commercial real estate. And um, there's been some pauses as well. And, um, you know, similar situation where people are just a little hesitant, wondering is, are the prices going to go down? Uh, you hear a lot of people talk about that. But, um, but uh, he's still keeping very busy in the charter school arena. And, um, so business keeps keeps going and we just have to stay positive for um you know for our own well-being but for the sake of our clients and i know that i feel strongly we're going to get through this one way or another we'll get through this well absolutely we will um okay well i appreciate all those insights from the uh from the front lines of uh of real estate uh, trish nash the vice chair for the henderson chamber of commerce and um yeah, we are going to all have to figure out how to be doing business uh, in whatever this new era looks like as it continues to unfold before us. So, uh, Trish, we thank you for your time thank today, you. and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. And thank you, thank you to the membership. Uh, all stay right. Well and Thanks, Scott, for all you do. We appreciate you. Okay. Bye.